Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. I'm excited for this episode. Again, it's one that's not necessarily a training tip. It's more of a way that we need to approach our training and our dogs in general. I think it's very, very important for the success of your dog and also your sanity as the pup parent. So let's get right into it. First things first, I'm going to say I'm not perfect at this. So yeah, just have to be upfront about that, right? You know, I, I I love doing these podcasts and I love I love talking about a lot of things that I have knowledge on, but at the end of the day, I am not perfect and I'm still learning and I'm still figuring out how to be a good pup parent and how to, you know, raise well-behaved dogs, all that good stuff. We're all kind of in this experience together. We're always learning and, you know, finding out new things. So I say that to preface that what I'm about to tell you is not easy, but it's something that you need to change the way you think about your dog and the way you think about training and behavior. What I mean is with our dogs, we have a lot of things that we're asking of them. We ask them to do certain things depending on the situation. We might ask them to sit. We might ask them to wait for their food. We might ask them to not bark at the door. We might ask them to not pull on leash. There's a lot of these things that we are asking them to do that are not, number one, they're not ideal for them. Like, I think it it is more enjoyable for our dog to chase after things, aka pull on the leash, than it is to just sit next to you, at least in the beginning, right? Um, You know, it is enjoyable for our dogs to, to rip things up. Even if it sucks for us, it's enjoyable for them. Like, they don't, they don't see a problem with ripping up shoes. It's just something fun and enjoyable for them. So there's a lot of things we ask our dogs that maybe are not enjoyable for them or maybe not really, you know, it's a challenge for them or or it's something that's asking them to change their behavior and to change, honestly, their natural intentions and their natural desires like a prey drive and food drive, right? We're asking them to suppress those in a sense. So one thing I want you to think about this week until the next podcast or as you're listening to this just in general is what are you giving back to your dog? It's simple for us to ask and ask and ask. I'm going to, you know, make, make a quick analogy. A lot of us, whatever age you're at in your life, you've probably been in a lot of different types of relationships, whether that be with family members, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a spouse, friends, coworkers, whatever it might be. We have a lot of relationships in our lives. And if you are in a relationship where you're constantly just asking and asking and asking, you're always asking for the other person to, you know, to do things or help or this or that, and you don't give much back in return, very quickly what's going to happen is you're going to get into an instance where because you've asked so many times and so many times and it And that person might start to feel like, man, I don't know if I'm getting enough in return for this, or I don't feel like the scales are balanced necessarily. It's very similar with our dogs on a more practical standpoint of, I think it's important to try and balance the scales of how we are interacting with our dogs. What I mean is, like I talked about, we ask, we ask, we have you know, when you th- really think about the things that you're doing throughout the day with your dog, there's a lot of asks and there's a lot of, you know, you're wanting them to be calm. You're wanting them to not pull. You're wanting them to, you know, lay down when a guest comes in and so they are not jumping up. Like there's a lot of things we're asking of them. And I think it's just a self, self-reflection, self kind of an introspection thing to ask yourself that I want you to ask yourself, which is, are the scales balanced in your relationship with your dog? Are you constantly asking or getting frustrated or, you know, does it always feel like, you know, you're just going a million directions, trying to just get your dog to do one thing right? And ask yourself, are you doing things to put into the relationship? And I obviously, we give our dogs a home, we give our dogs food, we give our dogs treats. We all love our dogs unconditionally, but I'm, I'm talking about it more from your dog's needs, you know. Are you giving your dog enough fun time during the day? Like it's a daily thing. And I've talked a lot about this, just the importance of physical and mental exercise and those types of things. 
my dog snoring. I don't know if you can catch that. Are you giving your dog enough fun things to do throughout the day? And and when I when I say fun, I don't mean fun with a catch, right? I don't mean, oh, we're, you know, going to go play this game, but it's only to do some training or, oh, we're going to go, uh, you know, go to this certain place, but it's only because I want them to learn in new environments or something like that. Like, are you giving your dog opportunities every day to just kind of be a dog? I know that sounds so simple and I know you might be thinking, yeah, of course, but really on a daily basis, we need to do things and to just tip the balance of the scales of like the relationship that we have with our dogs. So if you're doing a lot of asks, if you're doing a lot of difficult training, if you're really trying to get your dog to overcome some problem behaviors, you need to do things to offset that, that are just enjoyable for your dog. You know, it depends on your dog. Every dog's different, but you know, some examples are just playing fetch or even just like making up a new game. You know, my, my wife's really good at this. She'll just get out a toy and, and, you know, do different games with my labs and, and, you know, kind of do some tricks with it, but it's more just fun and engaging with them and, you know, giving some belly rubs in between and balancing the scales, making sure that our relationship with our dogs is not a bunch of asks, asks, asks. Of course, you're going to give treats when they do the ask or when you, when they do what you're asking of them, but taking it a step further and saying, are you doing things to make sure your dog is having fun, enjoyable moments throughout the day to keep them happy so that that relationship, they don't always feel like it's just an ask and an ask and an ask from you. And it turns into, wow, my pup parent takes me to do fun things. My pup parent takes me to, to kind of explore or, you know, be on leash, but just sniff around. And they're not asking me to stay right close next to them all the time, you know, just letting them explore the smells around them. Just a couple simple examples of things that I've been doing recently to try and kind of balance the scales with my dogs and with with the relationship that I have with them and making sure that we're not only always asking for things or are not only always trying to stop bad behaviors, but just giving our dogs time to be dogs and interact and have fun and do new things. So again, it's not a specific behavior. This isn't going to fix all your problems overnight. That doesn't exist. But I promise you that changing your mindset slightly to say, and to just ask yourself on a somewhat regular basis, am I doing enough to tip the balance of the scales for my relationship with my dog beyond the basics of food and you know, making sure they have a place to go to the bathroom? But are you doing fun things with them and, and making them want to be around you and want to interact with you and want to communicate with you? Because if you go and look at some of the best behaved dogs in the world, well-behaved dogs, if you look at some of the great dog trainers, if you look at some of these people who you know, they're doing tricks on TV with their dogs. Every single one of them has a seriously strong bond and ability to communicate with their dog. That didn't happen overnight. And it definitely didn't happen by only yelling at them or only, you know, redirecting them when they're doing something wrong or only focusing on the negatives, but rather finding these, these people, like I'm discussing these, these experts and these, you know, people with super well-behaved dogs, they do a lot to tip the balance of the scales back towards in the middle so that their dogs recognize it's not always work, 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 but there is opportunities for fun. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really hope you can leave a review on Apple Podcasts specifically. It's very helpful for the ep- for the podcast just to get more people hearing it and, and get it into more people's hands or ears or however you want to call that. But I truly appreciate all of you who have left reviews. I look at every single one of them. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.